In this video, we will be installing the programming language R, a program that allows us to interact with R in a more powerful way called R Studio, and a third package uh, or program called R Tools. So this is going to be for a Windows operating system computer. If that is not a computer you are working with, go jump to a different video that is for your system. So to start off, we are going to download the R program itself. So yes, it is the language, but it also has a standalone program that we need to install. To do that, we're going to go to the CRAN website. So this is the comprehensive R archive network. I have a link uh, down below this video, but you can also just search on Google or your search engine of choice for CRAN R. Comprehensive R Archive Network. It's a really cool organization that has developed this open source software called R that uh, data scientists and especially biologists have been using for the past many years. So this is a Windows system. There are other links, but we're going to be downloading R for Windows. Uh, on this page, there actually are a number of links that are of interest. Uh, this base link is where we're going to be getting the installable program itself. So we'll be going into that in a minute. Uh, Contrib or Contributed CRAN Packages is a repository of all the different packages that we use in R. So you will rarely actually go through your internet browser to access these. Um, I pretty much always install them through R itself. And so I, I, don't, I never really have to manually browse these. Uh, finally, there is R Tools. And for Windows systems, uh, R Tools is very powerful to allow us to go through and actually build any sort of program that uses more than just R, uh, specifically things using C++ or Fortran or a number of other languages that sometimes interact with R. So we'll come back to that. That's kind of an advanced usage, but it can be valuable. So to install, get the install function for R, we are going to go to this link. Uh, most of you will just be able to download this link here. However, you do want to make sure that you're downloading the correct version for your system. So the requirements for this version are Windows 10 or greater and a 64-bit architecture. Now, if you're not sure what you have, it's very easy to find out. We can just go to settings. So there's a number of different ways. Usually it's a sprocket symbol, depending on the version of Windows you're running. Then we'll go to system. We're gonna scroll down and go to about. So about is just telling us what's going on with our computer. Here I'm using uh, my UT computer. Uh, however, what's important is that I know I'm using Windows 10. So that means I'm meeting this version of the operating system. And I am using a 64-bit system, which is right here under system type. So you're gonna be looking for either 32-bit or 64-bit. So that has to do with how it, it uses your, your memory on the system. It's actually very um, important. However, for your considerations, you just need to make sure it matches the version of R you're downloading. And the reason why is because Ever since R4-2, it no longer supports 32-bit operating systems and or architectures. And so you will need to go to a previous version, which is available here, um, and download an appropriate version for your version of um, or your computer. So in this case, I am on a 64-bit system. I am using Windows 10. And so I can just download this version. You, you'll notice I already downloaded this ahead of time, so I'm just going to move on. But that's all you'd have to do is click that link. There's a few other considerations. If you are using like Windows 7 or 8 and you do have a 64-bit system, there is some additional software that you can read about right here that you may need to um, install. Again, may, it's dependent on your system. If you need help, reach out to your TAs, reach out to your instructor. Okay. So the next thing is that R tool, since it's on the same website. So I'm going to back up and go download R tools. So in this case, I downloaded R-4.2 
0.1. And so that is greater than 4.2.0. And so this newest version of R tools is appropriate. Now, if you had a previous version of R installed on your computer, I would recommend upgrading just because it helps us be consistent. Uh, I am in implementing this class with the belief that you have this newest version of R installed, so you might as well go install it. Um, on the other hand, if you are not able to download that version, you can go click on this one. And if you really have to move further back in time, you, there's even for older versions. So once I get here, this page is a little confusing. There's a couple different places where the link is stated, but these are separate links. This one down at the bottom actually links to the source. So if you actually are interested in some of the code that is running in here, you can go look at that. However, to install our tools, you just want to download from this link. And so just clicking on this will download the file. It's quite large, so I'm not going to start it up right now. I downloaded it ahead of time. So the next thing we want to download is RStudio itself. Um, so that is how a lot of you have probably interacted with R in the past, if you've interacted with R much at all. Um, it's because RStudio is a really nice way for visualizing what is happening in R. It's a graphical user interface, or a GUI, if you want to pronounce that. So a GUI uh, that allows us to interact with the programming language is also called an IDE. So I will find this by simply searching for RStudio. Um, interestingly enough, at the time of recording this, they announced they would be changing the name uh, as of the day before. So that might be coming up, but uh, for now, we can just go to RStudio. So I got to the website. I clicked on download. Uh, this will actually be the link that I share below this video. I am just going to navigate to the version I want. You can go for the commercial license if you want, but RStudio is wonderful because it's free. And it allows um, researchers who are just beginning to get into this world to use this type of program. So now that I am on this website, I can do some of the same kind of um, matching between versions that I did when installing R. Uh, in this case, I do have the newest version of R. So the current version of RStudio requires 3.3 or greater. Um, so that's going to be pretty much everybody. I don't think anyone's going to manage to have need an R that's lower than that. Uh, so I'm just going to download this. Uh, the one thing to note, though, is it does require Windows 64-bit. And so if you do have a 32-bit system or an older version of R, you may need to go to a older version of R Studio, which is available down here. So normally I would click on this link. Again, I've already downloaded it, so now we're just ready to install. So if I go to my download folder, I have these three programs. The one I want to install first is R. So if I click on that, it's going to ask for permission to uh, install this on my computer. Uh, I'm going to just recommend that you use the default settings. There are things that you could change, but most of the default settings um, are fairly conservative, and you don't really need to worry about changing too much about your computer. Um, if you do have questions, you, you may want to bring it up with your instructor or your TAs. So uh, you should read through the use agreement. Did you get all that? Uh, I'm allow, like I said, I'm going to allow it to install to its default location. I'm going to use the default settings. I'm not going to customize any startup options. I am going to allow it to save the version number in the registry. And with that, it's now installing. Fantastic. So it is now installed, and, and you can test your installation by trying to run it. And so if successful, you should have a new version of R installed.
And so this is the default view of R. It's not very pretty, and if any of you ever used R before, you'll notice it's much less pretty than R Studio. So we're going to uh, uh, supplement our installation with some extra tools. So I'm going to exit out of this. Install our tools. This one's going to take a little bit longer than the rest. I'll explain what our tools does in more depth, though, as it's installing. Again, I'm going to allow it to use all the default parameters. So while that's installing, I just want to talk about our tools briefly. So R is a language that is running code on your computer, and it is translating what you tell it into some sort of instructions for your computer to actually do. Um, so these all occur at different levels. The goal of R, though, is to be very interpretable to a human. So we can sit there and we can type in a language that makes sense to us. However, your computer doesn't think like a human. Your computer thinks in binary, not in chemicals. And so it will need to be translated into something the computer understands. So that process occurs through R. However, there are other languages that R programmers can also use to do certain tasks, things that maybe R isn't as good at, or simply they want to uh, kind of bypass that whole interpretation step and go closer to what your computer actually understands. So the language that are commonly mentioned in association with R tools are C++ and Fortran, both of which are just lower level um, types of computing language that allow you to con communicate with your computer a little bit more closely to computer language. So R tools allows you to build packages that are written that way. These are usually going to be custom packages or kind of cutting edge material that hasn't been prepared for just general um, use by the population. However, if you're doing cool research, that can be really powerful. And in fact, some of my favorite programs are perpetually stuck in that in development mode. And so this R tools packet uh, program becomes very valuable for those type of implementations. So finally, we're going to install R Studio. Same process as before. This time, though, we do need administrative privileges. Uh, there are some standalone versions of R Studio that if you really can't get access to administrative privileges, you can try and find. I do not recommend them. R Studio is a very nice program. And so it can be um, valuable to just communicate with your system administrator and get it installed. So now that it has permission, I can install it. Like before, I'm just going to install it to the default location and with default parameters. So our studio, um, like I said, it is a type of IDE, which is to say it allows us to visualize and just kind of supplements our ability to interact with R. It just adds functionalities that make it easier and more um, easily, easily understood by, by humans who are not experts in this language. And so for our purposes in this course, that's appropriate. So now that my tools are all installed, I'm going to launch our studio. Our tools is really only needed uh, when you are installing outside packages that haven't been prepared for your computer's architecture. And so for most of you, that's not going to be a concern until later in this course. I'm not really going to go into it in this video. But once you have this installed, you are all functioning. If it looks something like this, it can be different colors, slightly different things may appear. But as long as this loads, you have gotten everything functional. And if you're not sure if R was correctly updated because you had a previous version, it should tell you the current version that you just installed at this location on the screen. So with that, that will be the end of the video. Thank you so much.